Hello, this is Gernge with another quick tip video about making concrete or asphalt ground materials. You can use these tips to make roads, parking lots, or other urban areas. This video will build upon my previous quick tip for texturing large surfaces, so think of this as a part two or a companion video to that, since we want to make sure the textures don't tile. And as always, I'll be using Redshift. Today, I'll be using texture sources from Megascans and creating a parking lot using this information. Feel free to pick some textures of your own from other sources like Texture Haven, maybe the Substance Source Library, or anything else. And as a bonus, at the end, we'll be adding in cracks and patches, some parking lines, and rain puddles using the Random Bitmaps OSL node that I covered in another Quick Tip video. It's great for randomly scattering image textures like this. Starting off with one set of asphalt textures, I have the nodes for the Maxon Noise to drive the Texture Offset and Texture Scale, which we learned to set up in the Texturing Large Surfaces Quick Tip video. We can see this is working quite nicely, but since I'm going for such an authentic result, I want to layer this multiple times with other sets of asphalt textures. I'll find three or four more examples from Megascans and send them back to C4D. We'll copy in the nodes from the next asphalt material. Now, in the quick tip video for texturing large surfaces, we blended these together using a standard surface material and combined them using material layers. Since we'll be using so many texture inputs, I prefer blending the individual channels together in color layer nodes. So, we'll blend all of the asphalt diffuse colors and feed that into the diffuse input on a single standard surface material. We'll do the same process for roughness and normal channels and making sure to use a max on noise in each of the layer one mask inputs. Now, if you aren't used to blending together this many textures, it can get overwhelming pretty quickly. So only go as far as you feel comfortable for now. I do like to color code my texture nodes to help keep track of everything though. We'll solo the max on noise used as the layer one mask and make appropriate adjustments to its type, size, and output. Let's render and see our result. Making some progress for sure, we can go further by adding in more asphalt texture sets and adding in the bonuses like parking lines, puddles, or imperfections to the concrete, such as patches or cracks. So why don't we start with the puddles? If you want to keep the puddles simple, you can use the max on noise, which will work pretty well, but I want to push things really far. So I'll be using the random bitmaps OSL node that I covered before in another quick tip. I'll use it to randomly scatter around a set of puddle map image textures. Adjusting the values a bit so that there aren't too many and that they're spread out and sized accordingly and not overlapping one another. In preparation for layering in so many more textures, I'm gonna do a little bit of housekeeping and expose all of the inputs on each of the three color layers. Since this is a mask, it means I want the puddles to appear as white. So I'll use a scalar ramp node and flip its points to invert the colors. I'll be using layer 7 on the color layer nodes, since we want the puddles to be last or at the top of the stack of textures. Having a dark color value for the roughness will result in a nice, glossy appearance for the puddles. Next, we should connect it to the diffuse layer 7 mask, and have this set to a multiply blend mode with a gray color value. This will darken areas that have puddles, blending them nicely with the asphalt. Enabling bucket mode, we see the puddle appears a bit bumpy. And since actual puddles of standing water would have a flat surface, we need to reduce it. Doing this with the color layer method, we use a 128, 128, 256 color swatch in the layer 7 color, which will translate to a flat or no bump in a normal map. We can see the puddles have a nice, smooth appearance on top now. I'll speed things up as I add in two additional sets of asphalt textures for maximum variation making sure to adjust the various max on noises along the way and plugging everything into the color layers. Awesome, this is a parking lot after all, so I wanna add some parking lot lines. You can source these from a lot of different places on the internet or even just draw some on your own in Photoshop. I'm gonna grab a set from Megascans and make sure it's layer six in the color layers. Since I want these to be on top of the various asphalt layers, but underneath the puddles, obviously. In my case, the lines are repeating, so I'll disable the tiling in one of the axes, and maybe adjust the scale and offset parameters a bit. I think this is looking really great, and honestly, it's a perfectly good place to stop. But I like overdoing things, so let's add in some cracks and concrete patches from Megascans. 
we'll be using the same random bitmaps OSL node from the puddles, but there are a few tricks here though. We need a version of this OSL for each texture channel like diffuse, roughness, normals, and also the opacity. And make sure to find square aspect ratio textures or resize them manually, since we don't have an easy way to scale them unless you know how to edit OSL code. Now that we have a copy of the OSL and the appropriate textures are loaded into each one, we can connect them to the various color layers and masks. Now just make sure to keep the size and other randomization settings consistent for this group of OSL nodes. You can push this setup as far as you want, again, stacking multiple copies of this OSL node if you'd like, but keep an eye on the concrete patches that you're adding in. We want to make sure that they look harmonious with the base asphalt, so I used an additional color layer and averaged in the colors of the patches before connecting it to its diffuse color layer. All right, so as a conclusion, wrapping things up, let's step through this one at a time. So we have our first layer of asphalt, then a second layer of asphalt, now a third layer, and finally a fourth. Then we add in our patches of concrete and cracks then the parking lines and the puddles. And as a bonus, I made the entire surface more reflective as if it had recently rained. So I think this is an awesome result and this asset will hold up well in a variety of situations and different lighting conditions. If you found this information useful, please consider liking the video or subscribing to my channel to see more quick tips. And thank you so much for watching.